Hello again, awesomers. It's me, your old buddy, Steve Simonson, and it's episode number 207. If you were wondering if this would be the day that 207 would drop, you would be right. This way is the, the, the day. So awesomers.com slash 207. That's where you go to find out all the show details, notes, uh, or to see a funny link that says you went to the wrong place because I haven't actually put up a page and didn't bother to tell anyone else to do it either. So you just won't know until you try it. It's fun. It's a mystery. Today, I'm joined by two experts and friends, uh, Bernie and Ritu. Say hello. Okay, they waved, so that was a less audible uh, sound. We're going to do a take two on that one. Hello, Ritu. Are you there? Hey, Steve. <laughs> nice yep, to be here. She's real, everyone. It's, it's for real. I know if you're listening on the, well, even on the audio, you couldn't hear, but on the video, you couldn't see them wave them because uh, they're on the little screen. Bernie, are you there? Is it real? It's the Zoom etiquette, Steve. I'm, I'm used to these Zoom meetings with like 20 or 30 people now this year, so I've got to be quiet until it's oh, the right moment. That's a good point. Well, we have <laughs> no etiquette over here at Awesomers. We, uh, we eat, we jump in line, we do all the things that people aren't expecting. So yeah, just jump in when you feel it's right. And I, I, I asked these guys to jump on here with me as part of this little mini series we're doing about, oh crap, I ran out of inventory. Now what do I do? Can I, I tried to just put my product back in stock. I tried to spend money on ads. It ain't working. Uh, it ain't coming back. Um, my life is miserable. What do I do? Right? It's all hope lost. That's the question. So let me let me kick that premise. I'll, I'll start with Bernie and then go to Ritu after that. Bernie, what happens? Have, first of all, have you ever had that happen to you before? Yeah, I mean, obviously, this is a super important topic for this year, because I think everybody's supply was disrupted by coronavirus. So, you know, uh, for the businesses I'm involved in, in particular, the main brand I'm involved in, you know, we had this huge sales spike in March uh, when people went work from home, and that immediately drove us out of stock. And then, you know, all the, the supply was disrupted for several months. And so really, we were kind of fighting through the whole summer and into the early fall, basically, to get back in stock. Um, so yeah, so we've faced this kind of over and over again, uh, this year. So, you know, it's interesting. My, I, um, <laughs> you kind of expressed it in a little bit of a negative sense, like, oh, is it all over? Am I all done? Is this the end of my Amazon business? Actually, at times I've, I've like felt that over the years, you know, that this perch of, of getting a product that actually ranks, you know, that's actually there at the top of the page that there's so many competitors sitting behind that, that if I lose the perch, I will never get it back. Um, and, and actually, so this year we've been doing a number of new things with launches and then relaunches, like in, including back in stock. And we actually have a decent track record this year. S still scares the heck out of me every time I go out of stock. And I, and I, and I, I, go, I definitely have my woe is me moments. But actually, when we look at the data, we've been able to, uh, to pull it back together a bunch of times. Now, I'll say one thing, which is that um, there were some times over the summer where we went out of stock, we went back in stock, and we, we applied all the techniques we're going to be talking about here in this episode. Um, and I think it worked real easy. And I think one of the reasons why is there was lots of other competitors who were out of stock. Things have gotten tougher as we've gotten into the fall here, where if we're going out of stock now, you know, our competitors aren't necessarily going out of stock at the same time. So there's some real special things happening this summer where, go, you know, going back in and out of stock was kind of happening to everybody. Um, but even in a competitive situation, um, you know, there are things, you know, Amazon system, of course, is this, is this kind of statistical flywheel based system where your future success depends so much on what metrics Amazon has gathered about your products uh, looking backward. Um, you know, so there's techniques that you can use uh, both to you know, kind of trick Amazon to, to, to at least some degree into preserving some of those metrics. Uh, and then also just to be cognizant of those metrics and cognizant of kind of what you need to do in terms of throwing energy at that ASIN once you do go back in stock. And, you know, and I use the phrase launch and relaunch and launch and relaunch strategies because that is the way we think about it. I mean, basically, we have the, the different weapons in our arsenal uh, for sending traffic and sending momentum to an ASIN. Um, we will apply those same, that same arsenal, whether we're launching a product or whether we're relaunching a product. And it's really, in a sense, kind of about kind of how much firepower to use. Um, and, and definitely, you know, one of the things 
with going out of stock is uh, you, you need to take that seriously. Like if, if you do a half-hearted effort or you do not throw like a, a additional firepower at that relaunch, uh, y yep, you're going to lose the position. You're, you're going you're gonna to have been knocked off the pedestal and you're not going to get back on top. Um, so, uh, but in the end, if we treat it like a launch, a relaunch and a launch, uh, we, we can and we have now a whole bunch of times this year gotten products back up into their position. And in fact, you know, sometimes you know, kind of right back on a growth uh, trajectory. All right, so, so that, that you, what you're talking about is the history matters of the product, right? And the, and it, it clearly sounds like uh, it's not a honeymoon period when you relaunch, it's a, uh, penalty period. I'm not sure. We'll come up with some clever name later. Uh, the anti honeymoon. Uh, you're in the doghouse. You got to work your way out of the doghouse. And it sounds like you're you're implying that we got to spend our way out. Uh, Ritu, w what do you think about this situation? Uh, you know, when somebody goes out of stock, um, it, it, do they have to spend a bunch more money? What what is that? Uh, you know, getting out of the doghouse look like. Yeah, so as Bernie said, we've, uh, you know, collected a few uh, tactics to help us out of that state right after uh, we're back in stock. In fact, we start preparing for it even before we go out of stock because, um, you know, kind of we know that things are slowing down and so on. So, I mean, of course, going out of stock is one of the most dreaded, um, you know, situations to be in. Uh, but like Bernie also said, we've uh, come up with ways to kind of fix that. And um, one of the steps that we um, take right, you know, after something has gone out of stock is we close the listing. And this is something that I think a lot of people in the industry do. And I would like to credit Kevin for that, because, you know, this was an idea that he kind of uh, shared a long time ago. Uh, so anyway, we do that. And uh, that's the first thing we do. And then as, uh, you know, as Bernie also said, we uh, put the maximum firepower to the relaunch, just treating it like a launch and actually even more than that, because we do need to spend a bunch of money um, to make Amazon realize that this is not a dead product. Um, there is you know, something that we can do to recover it. So uh, happy to get into those strategies whenever you, know, you think it's okay. But yeah, it, as a background, I just think it's like AED for <laughs> the product relaunch. We just need to spike sales so that we can uh, give the algorithm enough to believe that yes, this is, this is a viable product and it is not dead. Yeah, so spiking sales basically says, hey, there's velocity underlying this ASIN. People obviously want it. Um, let me ask you guys. So you've already said, uh, Ritu, that closing the listing seems to be uh, an important thing to you or something that you do as a matter of practice because you're trying to preserve, at least this is my assumption, you're preserving the history up until that point. And then when you come back in, you reopen the listing and then the, the, the trends pick up where they left off. Is that kind of the philosophy? So we have been tracking this uh, regularly, like every single product that's gone out of sale, we have, um, uh, you know, we've been tracking the, the BSR, we've been tracking keywords um, before, during and after. So what happens when, uh, you know, we close a listing and what happens when we don't close a listing? We've done extensive testing uh, on those two uh, different uh, situations. and. You know, what we've noticed is that if we don't close a listing, then it just starts to run away from us. It just starts to, you know, starts to, you know, increase in, in, in sales rank, which is not good. You need the opposite, right? You want the sales rank to be a smaller number. Uh, so it starts to run away from us. But when we close the listing, it stays pretty much in the same uh, zone. But when we uh, reopen, we find a few days are definitely required to kind of get it back up to where it was. Uh, so so that's the, what we've seen it's kind of like the triage period is shorter if you've closed the listing based on real numbers. And I, I should, you know, uh, th for the audience out there, you know, I know Ritu and Bernie. And so I know all their credentials and backgrounds, but they are highly, highly analytical. They have extraordinarily sophisticated software and experience. Uh, you know, Bernie's company, uh, his primary company, you know, top 200 Amazon seller, a PPC Ninja, you know, that these guys operate at extraordinary data so this is not uh hey we're, we're just interviewing random people on the subway this is real data and so i, I want to just share that with people for context and of course at the end we'll we'll put some notes and some details in there where you guys can can uh, find these guys and and really voir dire the witness yourself but i'm i'm uh, endorsing them uh personally right now so 
so Bernie, let's talk about this idea. Uh, we've talked about if you go out, well, first of all, prevention, right? So let's talk about, uh, I'll make this statement. Uh, you guys can agree or not, but like if your inventory is not that expensive, hey, maybe go in a little deeper than you thought you should, right? Because the inventory at the end of the day is cheaper than some of the other things you're going to spend the money on. Now, there's some inventory that is massively expensive and you got to be really, really close to the supply chain because you just can't get so deep. So you have to look at that on your balance sheet and decide for yourself. But don't cut it so close you're going to run out often. Th this year, nobody could predict that the factories would shut down, that shipping would shut down. I mean, I, I watched containers of ours sitting in idle in various ports, right? Or the ship that it was supposed to load onto sits in a port for two weeks while nobody's loading or unloading. It's just insane. And, and you know, at this stage, it's not easy still to, to ship stuff, but air freight's come down a lot. Um, ocean freight is up a lot, but this is normal for Q4. It's hard to get ships uh, to take containers right now. The point, though, is it's much closer to normal. It's much more predictable at this moment in time. And when you have those predictable uh, pieces, don't forget uh, your, your point. So anyway, so you've closed the listing. Nevertheless, you ran out of stock. Let's talk about, Bernie, does it matter how long that product has been around? Does it matter how long you're out of stock? Are those variables that we should be considering? Yeah, and, and you know, like you were saying, I mean, we, we try to study this hard and really look at the statistics every time because Amazon's changing and, and we, we are not confident either. I mean, in a sense, uh, you know, the tests uh, that, that Ritu is talking about that we did with all of these, our own out of stock events, like, I mean, we, I, Kevin, does, Kevin King does an amazing job, you know, kind of analyzing things himself and looking at things. But in a sense, we're like saying, okay, well, Kevin King says it's good to shut the listing. Let's test that. You know, and so we're gathering stats trying to, to validate that. And it's not always clear. I mean, in this case, you know, I think the, the outcomes of that were fairly clear. Um, the other thing that's fairly clear, at least in my mind, uh, is Amazon is using kind of multiple uh, trailing periods of data uh, for the product in order to, you know, kind of construct this, this sales rank. Um, so, and that has, a, that has a bunch of different consequences. So let, let me kind of explain. Um, you know, like, for example, we're fairly confident that Amazon really doesn't use the one day trailing data. Um, we have been able to, we have lots of ways to spike sales for a day, like a, for example, a lightning deal. And generally there is, there is very little residual benefit uh, to that. Um, you, you're much better off with a strategy that will uh, cause a sales lift for a week or two weeks. So we, so in this kind of trailing, you know, the, this kind of a, 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 an index that combines a couple different trailing metrics, we're pretty sure it does not include the one day trailing, but does include probably a mix of seven day trailing, maybe 14 and 30. And interestingly, and people don't talk about this much, but you know, we, we've been around for 10 years and we've got some ASINs that just sell, you know, have been around for a long time. You know, I think there's some much longer term metrics in there, like trailing 365 day uh, sales, for example. And so, and, and, and so we've definitely seen things where we're way more nervous about going out of stock of a newly launched product that may have a good sales history for some of those early periods, but already it's, it's, it's got a weakness, which is it doesn't have this, the weight of this long sales history for some of these longer periods. And so it's a much more fragile situation where it's much easier to, you know, kind of um, underbuy, you know, for, and, and you know, how does this happen? And we've done this, right? You, you analyze the category and you say, I'm going to launch this product into this category. And you do all the right things on launch, except buy enough stock. Uh, and so you launch yourself right out of stock uh, and it's very hard to recover from that situation. I mean, um, the other aspect about that situation when you underbuy on that stock is, uh, Closing the listing definitely, you know, kind of helps maintain the metrics, um, you know, but the data is a little bit mixed. And basically, the longer you go, you're out of stock and kind of entirely off the market, well, at least the less confident I am about, you know, the ability to reopen that listing and immediately, you know, kind of pop back up to the previous uh, rank. I mean, it seems pretty solid. I mean, and actually, I, I'd love for Ritu to comment on it because I think Ritu's done some of the longer term studies where we've been out of stock for as long as a month or, or even six weeks. 
And it's, it, it's, it's, you know, there's some positive data points too on that in terms of closing the listing, but um, certainly makes me nervous. And we've had a few cases where we, where because of COVID, we've had a great launch, but then launched out of stock. And then because of all the delays you're talking about, Steve, which are not just at the factory, but they're also in the supply chain in terms of getting, you know, the goods to market. We've had some really long delays where we've gone out of stock a long time after a launch. Richard, do you including, want to comment on that? Yeah, including Amazon being a part of that supply chain that's super long. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Richard, let's, let's ask you or have you elaborate on this idea. How much of the the listing placement equity, we'll call it, right? How, how long that listing has been around, how long that ranking is kind of seasoned weighs into it versus a kind of a relatively new launch. Maybe this thing has lasted 30, 60 days, had a great launch, but you launch yourself out of stock. Is one different than the other? Yeah, I think uh, I think all those things matter. Um, but at the end of the day, um, it's your sales velocity right after you get back in stock. Like how you can, you know, how you can get the sales momentum up so that Amazon gets the right signals. And we're, you know, we're just focusing on what we can do in order to get to that uh, state more than anything else. I mean, I mean, you can analyze this no end, but uh, end of the day, we want to come up with strategies that can quickly help us get back to that, you know, sales volume. Um, so so that, that's the core question. I'm going to keep it on Ritu for a moment. When you do come back in stock, it sounds like you're more agnostic about the, the, the listing equity and so forth. You come back in stock, you've been out for, let's call it six weeks. And you say, uh, you know, you put the PPC up there and you notice the PPC costs you a lot more than it used to. And you're kind of, there's no ranking, right? Your, your BSR is, is uh, you know, climbed a mountain. It's at the top and it needs to be at the bottom. So what are the tactics or strategies that you employ to kind of get out of that situation? Right. So, um, so I guess we do a bunch of different things. Like the first thing that we do is, uh, you know, while a product is out of stock, we definitely have uh, a form on our website that collects um, any requests for, you know, uh, information when the stock will be back in when this product will be back in stock. So we do collect those emails, and as soon as we're ready to get back in stock, we send out uh, back in stock emails to all those people who signed up for that. But that tends to be a small number, so it's not really such a big part of the whole thing. Um, but then on the PPC side of things, we um, try to treat this like a launch. So we we do all the things that we would do at launch time. We always have coupons. Like we, at least that's something that we've realized that we do need when we're relaunching. We do set up coupons for at least 14 days so that you know we can just uh, get that momentum going. Um, definitely have um, you know bump up the bids on your most important keywords. Um, and of course we're going to lose some money in the beginning, but we do like the goal is to get that sales momentum back up. Um, so yeah, so that's the other one. We will bid high on important keywords. Um, and then we take advantage of placement modifiers, which is, you know, top of search placement that gives you the, the majority of the traffic and the majority of the um, uh, eyeballs. Uh, we try to get ourselves, um, you know, ranked there with the help of um, multipliers. Like uh, we have this zero to 900 percent range that we can uh, we can use on campaigns and try to get uh, some of that momentum from there. Um, so you're talking about these uh, increasing the, the spend or the thresholds. Are you increasing the cost per click or the budget or both? And I guess I'll, I'll, I'll start with that. Which which one yeah. or both are you raising? Yeah, so definitely all, on all fronts. So we will not restrict our budgets at all. So budgets will always be high. Uh, we will increase the bids we will increase the placement multipliers, uh, right. the bid placement multipliers, so that we can show up more on top of search because that's where uh, most of the conversions and, you know, it is expensive, it's a higher cost per click, but the, the good thing about cost per, the good thing about Amazon PPC is that it is uh, a cost per click. It's not, you're not paying for impressions, you're paying for the clicks. So um, we definitely want to take advantage of, of placements like that, right? The conversion should should uh, yield some results, even it if you're spending results. more than you're getting, that, exactly. that's part of the deal. So exactly. just to, to, to come back around on that, Bernie, maybe you have uh, this opinion. How long do you you spend at that level, literally losing money. We're all saying, yeah, sign up, lose some money for a while. How long do you yep. know and go before you decide if it's working or not? Because you can't do it forever. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, 
like a launch, it's, it's got to be for a relatively extended period of time. And so, yeah, it, it's part of why going out of stock is so, uh, so expensive uh, because, you know, like, like Ritu is saying, I mean, one of the good things about uh, going uh, kind of a relaunch is we actually have kind of well dialed in ads, um, you know, using our software and using all the attention that we've given to the product, you know, when it was in stock before our ads and our keywords are kind of dialed in. So it's really just a matter of making that decision to boost the spend on all this stuff that is already fairly dialed in. Um, but at least, uh, you know, the, the 14 day pin period is the absolute minimum and probably more like the 30 day period. You know, you've got to go back to the launch mindset of, okay, I just got to lose money on this until I can you know, get it back to rank. Um, I, you know, I think in most of the cases that we hit this year, um, you know, the 30 day period is probably sufficient. Um, and so in some cases, actually, it really popped back fast in a few cases where the, even the two, the two week period was sufficient when we kind of hit it with all guns blazing, um, you know, but, uh, um, you know, in that 30 day or that 30 day period or that two week period, you know, we might be, you know, going with, you know, an ACOS that's like triple what our normal one is. So we might be eating through you know, kind of three months of normal profits on that product in that one month where we're trying to get it back to rank uh, kind of thing. Yeah. So that, I mean, that portends that uh, don't run out of stock. And if you do get ready to pay, right, that's the, the nature of the beast. And this is, it's a live situation, right? Uh, these things change. The competition could change. The bidders could change. The pricing could change. The demand could change. All of these things. So nobody really knows the, the exact answer. But uh, Ritu, I'm curious again about this concept of honeymoon period, uh, at least the urban legend of the honeymoon period on, on original launch versus relaunch. Is that real? What impact, if any, do you think it has? Yeah, so like, uh, yeah, I would treat the, the honeymoon period after the relaunch to be a little bit longer <laughs> because you've got some proving to do. Um, so it's not like uh, Amazon is giving you benefit of the doubt. You're still trying to, you know, prove uh, yourself, um, you know, that, that you probably won't have a similar situation. So I think- So it, that, let me yeah. just clarify, that's the doghouse period, right? So the, the honeymoon house, period yeah. is when everything's happy and exactly. Amazon gives you a little more discovery juice. This is the yeah. urban legend. Yes. But when you run out of stock, you're in the doghouse and that's Absolutely. the juice you got, right? Exactly, yeah. And so so that is definitely more difficult. Um, you know, that's that's not just like, so. so we try with the 14 day period and if we do recover, that's good. If not, we extend the coupon. Uh, you know, period for another two weeks. So we just, you know, see how quickly we can get back uh, to the same sales velocity as we did before running out of stock, because that's the goal. And once that happens, then things take care of themselves. The organic takes over. Uh, but till that point, we're pretty aggressive. I got you. There's, a, me... there's another thing happening this year that, it, that really impacts this on the relaunch and also on the launch. And that's the, you know, the 200 item FBA limit. So, you know, we were talking about different timeframes of being out of stock and how closing the listing can kind of, you know, suspend your metrics. Uh, and, and so when you relist, uh, you kind of start where you left off a little bit. Unfortunately, it, that does not work that way for your uh, FBA inbound limits. As you uh, get to, you know, a month out of stock, Amazon's looking at your trailing 30 day sales. And there's no way to kind of suspend it. Um, and basically they're, they're using 200 units or uh, about three times those, those 30 day trailing sales. So if you've got a, a product category, you know, that's going to be running, you know, let's say as even the worst case, like in the thousands uh, of units per month in order to be a top ranked product and you go out of stock, as you start getting close to 30 days, your, your available inventory that you can ship in when you get back in stock just keeps dropping until it hits that 200 unit point. And, and then this has been a big challenge of product launches this year. And now it becomes a challenge of relaunches, which is, oh my gosh, I can only, you know, have 200 units stocked at FBA. So first of all, you get a geo rank penalty uh, pretty quickly because you're not, your, your products are not no longer sitting throughout the network really close to customers. And you're going to get like, if you have a successful relaunch on a product that was you know, moving 2000 units a month a few weeks ago, but now you're limited to 200 units in FBA, you're going to blow through those units in a few hours. What are you going to do? Uh, do you have a backup you know, merchant fulfilled solution? You know, is it something you know, like deliver or something like that? What, what is your backup solution? And is there a rank penalty to your backup solution? Which I think there usually is. I mean, ultimately FBA 
I mean, there's been some weird data this year about how kind of uh, Amazon has been um, rewarding or punishing the use of F FBA. And believe it or not, there's been periods where they've punished the use of FBA. Um, but in any case, there's impacts uh, and, they, and they impact your ability to relaunch. So, um, yeah, so this year, especially, there's been some very weird factors. Uh, and, and so going out of stock for a longer period of time has a bigger impact. Yeah, that is uh, one of those stupid variables that we just, you know, you can't control that FBA goes from basically two days or less to, hey, it could be a month, still prime, right? Or you may have the stock in Ohio, but Chicago doesn't see the prime badge because they decided that's too far. They don't want to pay the price at Amazon for the prime delivery. So you're, you're either not showing or you don't have the prime badge if you show. These are, these are, <laughs> nightmares, uh, frankly, they're nightmares. Uh, and how can you stop sleeping on the couch if you're in the doghouse? You can't, right? Amazon has penalized you and you will stay in that, on that couch for some time to come. So, but I, I think if we summarize this, you, you have to be able to do Merchant Fulfilled at this stage in the game. It does appear to me that, that the, I don't know, the penalty or the discounting of a merchant fulfilled listing is less than it used to be, if at all, right? I think that Amazon's more or less gone, you know what? We don't want all this stuff at FBA. We learned a lesson this year at Amazon, right? They said essential goods, fast moving goods, this is what we want there and everything else can pish posh away. Do you guys agree with that premise? I think for now, that's exactly right. Now, yeah. could they change that decision at any time? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, dang it. Always with the caveat, Mr. Brightside over there, everyone. He's just painting the pictures. Uh, so, so now that we have, we've talked about PPC, if we're going to recover, we've got to recover. But I want to just see if there's any tipping point on a relaunch versus a re-rank. So let's say that the product is relatively new. Let's say 30, 60 days old, came in, ran out of stock for whatever reason. It's out of stock for 45 days plus. Do you relaunch that thing entirely and take advantage of this, uh, this so-called honeymoon period? Or do you try to re-rank and pay through, you know, play through the pain, pay through the pain? What's your thoughts? I'll go to you to first, Ritu. Um, that's an interesting one. Um, yeah, I, I think it would be beneficial to, you know, keep the, the history that Amazon already has intact and just you know, try to re-rank. Um, I wouldn't try to necessarily relaunch as in start from scratch. Is that what you mean by That's what I mean. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. I, I don't know if I would do that. Uh, I think Bernie would be a better person to answer that. All right. I would try to, you know, use the, the history that's already there because it's too valuable to let go. Yeah. Fair enough. Bernie, over to you. What do yeah, you think? No, I, I, I agree with Ritu and all, and all of our uh, data points at this too, you know, that the, it's, unless you've allowed Amazon to accumulate a bunch of negative metrics about your product, it's mm. better to you know, relaunch and, and under the same ASIN and use those metrics. So we're, now, if you've not closed the listing, if you let the, the product kind of bounce along with low stock and in and out of stock for months on end and, and the sales rank was low, you know, you were selling the product, but with a low sales rank for months on end, that's a totally different situation. You've now not followed the, you know, the guidance we're talking about and you've built with Amazon a, a track record that this is not a successful product. And then you, know, you, you, get, you get saddled with those metrics and a relaunch under a new ASIN you know, may be the only way you know, to recover that situation. Yeah, so it's a rehabilitation play if it is close to the time you ran out of stock or closer to the time you ran out of stock and without an extended crappy sales period afterwards, right? If, if, it, if you just dawned on you that things aren't going great and it's been 30, 60, 90 days after that new inventory came in, you're kind of screwed and glued. You should probably relaunch at that point. I, I got shaking heads, yes. So that's the yep. bobblehead, yes, everyone. B Bernie got mm -hmm. in there. So Ritu, <laughs> is there anything else besides PPC they should consider doing? Um, you know, as we try to wrap this thing up, it's clear that they need to push through the pain, play, pay through the pain, as we said earlier. Anything else that they should be doing or considering? Well, even within PPC, there's so many things that you could do uh, to recover. So one of the tactics that we use is that we steal traffic from some, some of our existing uh, products that are already live. Uh, we basically run ads to those. So if uh, so, let's say product A is doing well, it's in stock, everything is fine. Uh, so and, and we're relaunching or 
uh, I guess, going from the doghouse, right? So that that relaunch, right? So we can run an ad for uh, against our own successful product and steal some eyeballs. And we've we've been able to get a lot of traffic that way. So that's something that we always do, uh, especially using sponsored display ads because sponsored display ads will kind of show up uh, right under the bullet points or in the right rail under the buy box area. So it's kind of uh, the proximity of, of those ads is really great. So we want to take advantage of that. Uh, we also take advantage of um, every single ad type that's out there, uh, video ads, uh, sponsored product ads, uh, sponsored brand ads to make sure that, you know, we have those running for, for the product that went out of stock. So it's cross motion and all yes. the cover, the cover, the entire bingo hall, yes. right? Everything mm -hmm. on that, Absolutely. I guess a bingo card, right? You want all those spaces that you can get your hands on. Do not um, be shy at, at all. <laughs> yeah. I like that. And, yeah. and don't leave the, the things like video ads to the side. You got to do everything to get the attention. So Bernie, um, any, any other things they should add in besides the things that Ritu's already talked about, you've already talked about? Yeah, I mean, it, because it, we've always been this uh, white hat seller, like we don't play any games, like we don't even have any many chat funnels you know, that we send people into, which is kind of odd for our category. So we just have to be really, really good at ads and staying in stock and discounting and the kind of the, how the combination of things are more, as with all things, the combination is more powerful than any one technique on its own. Uh, but definitely the, you know, the ads for us have become, you know, this, this thing that you know Amazon's not going to take away because Amazon's making boatloads of money off of them, um, you know, but that is a white hat way uh, to rank. And uh, so we rely on them heavily and, and um, you know, we, without uh, kind of software to manage all of it, um, you know, we, we just simply wouldn't be able to do it. And so- Yeah, it would know. be a nightmare. I mean, this is yeah. the part of the point is if some of these things like the bid multipliers or the placement that, that Ritu has talked about, if some of this is like a foreign language to you, uh, you're not prepared. Let me just say that. You're just not prepared. Now that, that's not me sliding you, that's me, telling you get in the game you've got to learn these things and if by the way i don't want to learn these things i don't like to know anything i try to find the experts who know everything and that way they're they're topical experts and that's why i wanted to get ritu and bernie on here uh their focus especially at ppc ninja is all about getting it right with ppc getting campaigns set up ritu talk about what's the mission and vision behind ppc ninja why does it exist uh, we basically want everyone to be a ninja. <laughs> That's our goal. Well, listen, I have throwing stars and stuff in the back. Well, you can come over to my house. We'll throw stuff around. But uh, what does it mean beyond that? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, um, you know, being a ninja is all about being uh, smart about your advertising and, you know, being able to uh, quickly find um, areas to optimize and areas to cut bleeding and uh, just be very sharp about it. So, I think the whole image of PPC Ninja is uh, using software uh, in a way that uh, helps you achieve that. Um, and of course, we want to pair it up with uh, good education. So we actually at PPC Ninja, we offer these masterminds that are really uh, great for people to kind of uh, understand those basic concepts that help uh, you do really good at PPC. Um, so kind of that's kind of a package deal for anyone who signs up for our software. Um, and um, yeah, so that's, I, I would say, you know, even if you don't want to do, uh, you, if, even if you don't want to have anything to do with your PPC, you can't really avoid it because it's such an important uh, area <laughs> that uh, without PPC, um, I'm not sure if your, um, yeah, if, if, if your strategies to, to rank on Amazon are adequate. So uh, I would recommend everyone to, to kind of focus heavily on that. Yeah, you got to get good at it. And I have said this for years. I'll repeat it before I jump to Bernie. The world at Google used to be, oh, I'm going to do organic and then I'll just spice in a little paid stuff here and there. And then, oh, I got to do a little more paid stuff here and there. It's all paid now. Listen, you, you may get some organic rank here or there and fine. Kudos. Uh, you got lucky. And that, that's really about content. Amazon doesn't have the content piece of you really to, to rank against, right? Your content is not what's ranking you. Your relevancy to an extent, but really they're moving to a fully paid page that's my belief now, nobody's told me that but i yeah. i've seen it before i'll see it again and by the way that's their biggest growing fastest business it's mm -hmm. growing by billions a year because all of us just agreed to spend a lot more money 
right? That our solution, spend more money on Amazon PPC. And the guys over in the PPC land are going, right answer. Excellent, <laughs> right? They're, 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 they're like Mr. Birds of the Simpsons. Excellent. So, uh, but that's, that's the way it is. And it'll be a pay for play platform uh, faster than you can, you know, uh, blink your eyes. So Bernie, yeah, it's already there. Yeah, I, I really think it is. So uh, any any key takeaways as to you know why is PPC Ninja a thing? What, what, is there any yeah. difference about it versus others? Well, you know, kind of like I said, I mean, we we actually are in this odd position where you know I'm here in Seattle. I know all these guys at, at Amazon. I mean, I get I'm in all the betas. I've given feedback to them for ten years. I I you know if I even if I wanted to be a black hat seller, I'm way too like high profile to to ever do that. So we never have. And so we're stuck with really kind of the methods Amazon endorses, and we have to get really good at them. And I feel so fortunate uh, to have Ritu and the PPC Ninja team, the software uh, you know, team behind it, because we've had to focus there. Uh, if we don't succeed at PPC, we fail as a business. And you know, as you know, Steve, I've got a, a very large private label business that's been around for 10 years that's been, I don't know if we're still in the top 1,000 of, of overall sellers, but for most of that 10 years, we've been in the top 1,000 often in, you know, in the top 100. So, um, so basically, we're really, really good at doing these ads for ourselves, and PPC Ninja is bringing that same capability to any of you out there. So the exact same software that we use to, man you know, to manage our own ads, and I'll say we spend over a million dollars a year on Amazon ads, just to, yeah, just yeah, to put, sure. a, put a framework around it. Um, so the same software we use to manage our own ads and the same team that we use to manage our own ads. And that team is led by Ritu who runs the PPC Ninja business. That's a pretty unique uh, differentiator, everybody that, you know, they put their uh, money where their mouth is and they have all the experience. One of the things that I love about uh, Bernie's answer there is did you hear how, how much, uh, I don't know, this, this stress was in his voice when he's like, I wish we could try the black hat stuff. I, I just would, I would kill for it, but they, they see me. Right. And this is the problem. Bernie and I are in Seattle. Right. And so we're, uh, have a lot of local uh, folks and connections and, and people, and we want to help them out. Right. Cause they want to help us out ultimately. And so, yep. uh, but when you have those relationships, crossing the line would, would be a violation of all of that trust and all that relationship. It just doesn't make sense for us. So, uh, but I, I definitely feel your pain, Bernie. Like, oh, you know, and, 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 and I express it to Amazon because I, I get so frustrated with Amazon. You're not making this easy for me. I'm, I'm the white hat guy and you're making it really hard on me, Amazon. You, and, you know, Steve, that we have these discussions with, with our Amazon friends quite often. Uh, and, uh, but fortunately, you know, for better or for worse, Amazon is becoming a pay to play platform. And so, and that means ads. And so that means actually our ad focused strategy has been getting more and more powerful every year. Um, and uh, so in a way, pay to play is, is how Amazon actually, becomes white hat. Yeah, it actually can clean up the thing because the, it's, it's all the black hat guys who aren't willing to actually pay for conversions. And I've said for years, it was one of my axioms, I don't know the number, but you guys can look it up. If you, you don't have a real business until you can pour money in the top of the funnel and gross profit falls out the bottom in a predictable, sustainable way. That's when you have yep. a real business. Not when you find some magic pixie dust that made your product rank or that the solar eclipse and you had some glasses and you got, you know, a bunch of, that's not what a sustainable business is. We're, we're talking about long-term positive equity building uh, strategy. So listen, you guys, uh, it's very, very valuable. I appreciate it. Uh, Ritu, where can they find uh, all these uh, ninja? I, I understand you have full ninja weapons pack. Do you send them uh, stars and uh, <laughs> some sort of daggers? Uh, what, 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 uh, how do they find that stuff out? We have all, all of those. Um, so I, I would recommend if anyone is interested in you know, learning more about PPC Ninja or you know, all the, the offerings we have, just go to ppcninja.com and uh, let the page guide you, but you know, I just want to highlight the PPC mastermind that we've done eight masterminds this whole year, and uh, they're six weeks. Uh, well, now we've shortened them and compressed them into four weeks, so it goes even faster. It's free. It's free for anyone to join, and they get access to our tools for that whole four four week period. Uh, but I've seen people who graduate from those uh, masterminds. They're like they fall in love with PPC, and that's my goal. Like I just want to make sure that you know they start out with a hate hate relationship. At the end of it, it, they're like, whoa, this is so much fun. And, you know, that's what I want. So 
you know, our goal here is to educate while we're helping with uh, the automation part of it. Uh, so that's what we stand for. So if anyone wants to join, uh, feel free to, you know, sign up. Uh, PPC Mastermind link is right up at the top of our page. Uh, just uh, follow it and just, uh, yeah. Uh, Love to see you uh, join in the next one starting in January. I love it. I didn't even know about that. That's a great idea and a, a good way to. I, I like the idea of we're going to move from hate hate to love hate. Everybody, uh, well, you know, at least half of it. That's a, that's a pretty good jump because uh, there's still going to be some hate. Well, the the truth is, um, like Bernie, I've been around the block in the consumer space for a long time, spending you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands a month. Uh, you know, we came close to a million bucks a month uh, at times. And the, the truth is, you're, if you could say, I don't want to spend the money and make the same amount, you would, but you can't. So you go, well, at least I know I can spend the money and make the money. That is a level of confidence that is really, really uh, helpful. So uh, again, Ritu, thanks very much. Uh, any final words for the sellers, Ritu? Um just keep being ninja <laughs> there you go be ninja ppcninja.com uh bernie any final words uh no I, I hope everybody you know kind of comes out of the coronavirus with a business that is stronger than when you came in there's a lot of other business owners that have restaurants and other things like that who this is this is really a terrible year for them and i think a lot of us in the e-commerce community you know there's actually uh some some sun you know uh, sunlight at the end of the horizon or, or at the end of the tunnel and you know, so uh, we should all be kind of thankful uh, for what we've got. And uh, I, I wish everybody the best of success. That's a very good point. Osmers, thanks for listening. Uh, this is the time where you go uh, fill out the uh, five-star review on Apple and whatever your favorite platform is. And by the way, I ain't, I ain't too proud to make. That's what I'm doing. Give me the five stars or I will come to your house and I will wash your car until you give me the five stars. But one way or the other, I'm getting those five stars out of you people. Uh, and uh, until we meet again, Osmers, I'm Steve, and go to osmers.com slash 207. Thanks, everybody.